Back in October of 2019, a friend and worker of Rosario Dawson and her family filed a bombshell lawsuit against Rosario, claiming all sorts of things like actual assault, physical assault from Rosario and her mother, as well as uh, anti-transgender persons discrimination. It was sort of regarded in a lot of ways as the next step of cancel culture, and this flared up in early 2020 because of Rosario Dawson's casting in The Mandalorian, a show which itself has seen uh, plenty of allegations for cancel culture crop up, most notably the removal of Gina Carano over a couple of tweets, which many people find to be completely innocuous. That being said, this was another instance where uh, Disney or any other large company or employer was under immense pressure and backlash from a dedicated community of people on Twitter who seemed to have the sole life goal of canceling someone else for some perceived injustice. And the big word there is perceived. Well, you probably don't know it because it wasn't really announced or covered heavily in a lot of circles, but Rosario Dawson's lawsuit has finally come to an end. What's the result, you might ask, right? Did she, did she assault this guy? Is she guilty? Is she having to pay up? Was it a huge settlement? No. Turns out it was all bogus and the entire case was dismissed. Let's talk about it. I'm Nick Riqueda of Riqueda Law, a small law firm in central Minnesota. I'm a lawyer. I'm also a legal and political commentator on YouTube and on Odyssey. Wherever you're watching, go ahead, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and make sure you turn on your notifications. Don't do all the work of subscribing if you're not getting notified about it. Make sure you don't miss any videos. All right, so this story is coming out of Vanity Fair, uh, which is basically, well, you can make up your own mind on Vanity Fair. I have mine, but it's who I saw report the story, so we're going to give them credit on it. But we're going to take a brief look at it to get the background of the legal issues here. And then I'm going to talk personally, I guess, uh, about cancel culture, the dangers of it, and what people seem to not understand about these lawsuits, about these accusations, and about the responses to them, why they're so dangerous. This is a theme that hits pretty close to a lot of stuff I've covered on this channel. So make sure you watch to the end of the video so you get all of that uh, all of that information. All right, so here we go. The dispute destroyed a decades-long family relationship, generated headlines around the world, and divided a galactic fandom. Okay, okay, Vanity Fair. Last week, it ended quietly and without public notice with a full dismissal. Or at least it ended in the U.S. legal system. No, that, that's the end. That needs to be the end of this stuff. The intense feelings surrounding the case of Dedrick Finley versus Rosario Dawson seem likely to endure. The problem with this is, as, as we're going to find out, a lot of the feelings about this were a lie. It's a lie. It's based on a falsehood. And that's why these, these allegations are so dangerous. The outcome doesn't matter for Rosario Dawson. People are going to be mad and call her an abusive, hateful monster forever. But she's completely cleared of all of this. And she's not completely clear. You'll see. In October 2019, Finley, a trans man who had known Dawson and her family for many years and worked for them in Los Angeles doing household repairs, filed a lawsuit alleging mistreatment and discrimination, including physical assault and anti-trans insults, such as deliberate misgendering. It was a disturbing allegation against an actress who has supported LGBTQ plus causes. Yeah, Rosario Dawson does not strike me as the bastion of anti-woke ideology or like some last holdout to not use someone pro someone's pronouns. I mean, I don't know her or anything, but that just doesn't seem in character for her and her position. But, you know, I, you know, I, I guess I guess she's an anti-trans monster, right? Because because she beat a trans man uh, nearly to death. That would be if you go with the if you go with the uproarious uh, accusations swirling around her and take them at face value. That's what you'd conclude. In the era of Me Too, however, many were eager to hear out the accuser, 
since the public images of some well-known figures have not always matched their behaviors in real life. Question. Let's, let's go back to that. Let's go back to that a little bit later, because that is one of the big themes of this whole uh, accuser is correct until proven otherwise culture that we've built. The volume went down as lawyers got to work making motions before the court and submitting evidence in interrogatories. The issue flared up publicly again in March 2020, when rumors began to circulate that Dawson had been cast as, popular Star Wars char as a popular Star Wars character. Again, that's in The Mandalorian. Some fans loved it. Others expressed anger that Dawson would be hired with serious allegations still unresolved. Court filings showed that the case gradually began to wither. Last fall, the court granted Finley's voluntary request to withdraw all but two of his claims, and the lawyers representing him withdrew from the case. Finley sought to continue pursuing two claims that related to an alleged physical altercation. The court asked him to submit further evidence in order to proceed on those. Wonder what happened. That led to May 21st, when, according to documents obtained from the Los Angeles County Superior or Los Angeles Superior Court, a judge threw out those final remaining claims after Finley did not respond to repeated court requests for documentation, answers to questions, and an independent medical examination aimed at reinforcing his claims of mental and physical pain. After hundreds of pages of motions, came down to a three-page ruling and one key sentence. The court hereby dismisses the action. So, what do we have here? We have a pattern. We have a pattern going on in society, and it is make the allegation, make the claim. The claim destroys the other person. No matter what happens after that, the other person remains damaged. And it's done through the legal system, it's done through social media, and it's done with a horde of people who surround the accuser and then seek to destroy the accused. They, they automatically, they have a, a conditioned response to believe the accusation. They form the modern day mob. The lynch mobs of old were just this that ended in death. Now they don't end in death. They end in the destruction of a career, of a reputation, of a job of a relationship, of any combination of those things. And they all go back to that. They all go back to this idea that the accuser must be accusing someone because otherwise, why would you subject yourself to the ridicule, to the, to the danger, to the financial cost, to whatever of bringing these claims? And yet over and over and over again, we're finding out that people are more and more willing to subject themselves to all of the supposed dangers of raising a claim against someone only to see those, all of the proof, all of the requests for, can you give us some evidence, please? Can you show us where this happened? Can you do anything? Did you tell anybody at the time? All of those things wither away. They just disappear. They fly off into the distance, never to be heard from again. And often in the thronging mob, they're forgotten. They were never requested. They don't matter because the mob was satisfied by the accusation. They didn't need any other help. And so this happens to Rosario Dawson. We saw it happen to Gina Carano, another person who seems to be completely unhateful and wholly positive on social media, in real life. Everything about her seems to exude positivity, and she was treated as a hateful monster who needed to be blacklisted entirely from Hollywood forever because of one tweet that went against the political feelings of one person and a mob of people that surrounded them. We've seen it in plenty of other cases as well. We've seen people destroyed over and over. And when asked for proof, when asked for evidence of these things, no one's ever seeming to be able to produce something concrete, something tangible. And that's what happened here. The reason his lawyers left, by the way, the reason this, this uh, Rosario Dawson accuser's lawyers left, he was unwilling to cooperate with them to provide the information and evidence necessary to proceed on the claims. I'm going to guess it's because it didn't happen. If they don't have any evidence, they don't have evidence of, 
of medical harm. They don't, they're not even the court sitting here. Look, we're going to get you a medical examination so we can show that you have the physical and mental scars that'll work. This will help with, with damages, you know, go ahead and do that. Won't even do that. Why though? Because it's not true. And we have to get away from this. We have to get away from the idea that the accusation makes the truth because the accusation is just an accusation and anyone can make them. And we're getting to a part, a point where people's entire lives are defined by their accusations because they've not been able to define their lives elsewhere. So accusing someone who's high profile, doing it on social media, it's really for a lot of people, it's a low, it's a low lift operation to gain them some sort of status, clout, admiration, recognition of their bravery for standing up. Pushing forward a movement, who knows what the motivation is, but it's shown to be provenly effective in almost all cases. This person will not be destroyed because they brought a false allegation against a beloved Hollywood actress. Someone who, who seems to run a relatively low profile, doesn't seem overly vitriolic on either side, does her thing, supports her causes. I, don't, I think there's lots of stuff where Rosario Dawson, I would probably disagree, but that doesn't matter, right? Like, I like her as an actress. She's fine. And she's just trying to go on and do her thing. And then this accusation comes in. It almost cost her her role at Disney. It, uh, it raised ire of people. It may have actually behind the scenes cost her other roles. This went on for a year and a half. A year and a half of having accusations of seriously, uh, seriously unpalatable behavior looming over you is a long time. It's a very long time. And now that they're resolved, guess what? They still won't go away because people will still say, oh, well, you know, the court system was just rigged or, or whatever. And it'll be that way. It'll be that way for many people until the end of time. Rosario will be un, un, irreparably damaged by this accusation forever. And so will everyone else because we've built a culture that honors the cancellation. But that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Drop a comment down below. Can't wait to see what you say. Until next time, thanks for watching. Peace. Peace.